absolutely no match for the genius of Hitchcock. It's interesting that I stand by an attraction on one of the most popular animated films in the world today. Because the film we're looking at today is an unexpected one that tells the story of Kong in a Disney-like manner. In fact, a very infamous Disney princess provides the voice of Anne. So let's take a look at the 1998 cash grab called The Mighty Kong. The film begins with Anne Darrow, voiced by Jodie Benson from The Little Mermaid, as a down-on-her-luck actress looking for work, meeting film director Carl Denham, or wait, I should say C.B. Denham, voiced by Dudley Moore, who offers her a job in a new movie. They board the venture... Oh, wait, never mind, I guess it's called the Java Daisy. Java Queen? Anyway, they board the ship and leave for the film shoot. Oh, by the way, there's a monkey that lives on board causing trouble throughout the trip. He's really kind of like the snarf of the group. Easy for you to say. They arrive on the island and the natives, who are friendly to the crew, ask them to leave so that Anne could be used as a sacrifice. Anne is then sacrificed to the giant ape King Kong, oh wait, sorry, the mighty Kong, who makes off with her into the jungle. Together they fight a dinosaur and are off the island in five minutes. No, really, really, they only end up on the island for like five to ten minutes, it's real fucking bullshit. The film then follows Kong's rampage of New York City. Kong then retrieves Anne and takes her to the top of the Empire State Building. The biplanes of course come in to attack Kong with their guns, but miss most of the time. Well, it is a cartoon. When all the planes have been knocked down, the army sends two blimps with a net between them to catch Kong. And they do catch him successfully. Kong tries to get out of the net, but the net rips when Kong reaches for Anne, and he falls from the net. He bangs into a balcony and plummets to the ground. Kong's mightiness ends when he slams into the streets of New York. However, Kong survives the fall to make more of a family-friendly ending. This is what the animated Titanic movies are to the nostalgia critic for me. A cheap and lazy animated feature to cash in on Mighty Joe Young and Godzilla. Not much is known about the making of the film, but from what I've seen, the animation is cruddy and the music by the infamous Sherman Brothers is not that great. And it's really annoying. What is it with most Kong productions where the musical numbers are real shitty? Hope that's not the case for the King Kong musical right now. Dudley Moore as Denim, being the last role before his death, is the only thing enjoyable about the film. He plays it very British and keeps switching characters from good to bad. Jodie Benson as Anne, while a great choice for the animated version of the character, is completely wasted here and has not much to do. Jack Driscoll in this version is even more bland and boring than the original 1933 film. How the hell does that work? While Bruce Cabot had sort of a tough guy with a soft heart character, this guy is dull as hell. He doesn't do anything. He's mostly a dick in this movie, and every other scene, he restocks his line of What? 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 God, you can make a drinking game for how many times he said it. Other characters like Inglehorn, the cabin boy and the monkey, the crew and the natives are really forgettable. They're in the same stock characters as something out of the Magic Voyage. Except for Roscoe, he's pretty cool. Kong in this film looks like crap. They made him more manly than the other versions, and it almost looks like he's on steroids. The dinosaurs are completely wasted, and only appear for brief seconds. That's right, if you're looking for a royal animated rumble between Kong and the T-Rex, it's five seconds. Like the animated Titanic movies, the animation in this is horrible. Not even matching the lip movements, and sometimes resorting to restocking shots. Yep, you get to see some of the shots twice. Overall, the movie is bad, with horrible animation, bad dubbing, and annoying music. I'd say again, get it if you're a hardcore fan, but only as an item and not for watch. Skip it. You'll be glad you did. 3 out of 10. So there's my review of The Mighty Kong. It truly was a cash grab. So next time, 